David Pierce. So David oh, wow. Pierce is is uh, very well known actually um, for a couple of websites, the Good Drug Guide and um, and Opioids dot com or something. Is that right? <laughs> well, maybe. <Yes>. Uh, <laughs> rather different emphasis uh, uh, in that, uh, uh, with a number of exceptions uh, in certain circumstances, I don't recommend people try opioids. Whereas there are a number of interventions that they can explore that can brighten their mood. Um, so yes, one wants to draw a, dist a distinction between the two. Um, hmm. So, so okay, well, um, first of all, we're talking about trying to improve people's experience of life, trying to make them their moods brighten, uh, uh, reduce suffering. I think that's the overall goal. Um, how do we, what are the best ways to achieve this for the, for, um, the average Joe and Betty? <clears throat> I mean, the first advice, unfortunately, is crashingly uh, boring, but it's important. Uh, an idealized diet, uh, regular aerobic exercise, good sleep discipline, uh, cut out some of the recreational drugs. Um, yeah, all the boring stuff one ought to have learned at school. Um, nonetheless, there are a fair number of people who do absolutely everything right, diet, exercise, sleep discipline, and unfortunately their normal default state of consciousness is extremely unsatisfactory, either you know, chronic low-grade depression or anxiety or something like that. Um, so yes, there are a number of dirty options on offer. Um, now if you're lucky, uh, as I said, you, you don't right now want to radically change your state of consciousness, but of course for evolutionary reasons Many people are not lucky. Evolution did not design us to be happy. On the whole, evolution designed us to be discontented because it was the discontented, restless people always seeking, seeking more wealth, more reproductive opportunities, more essentially were the ones who passed on their genes. Um, so yes, there are a number of options, but I would stress again that uh, they are all uh, flawed and in many cases you won't get it right first time. Um, hmm. The, the, you, you mentioned that um, all the boring stuff that people learn to, uh, at school, um, and I guess this is about exercise regimes and keep doing a healthy diet. I'm sure, like uh, some of the people watching, may have learned other things at school. <laughs> Maybe some of the more dirty options of uh, um, drug use. Uh, so yeah, I think it's it's interesting to note that. Younger, the younger generation can be a little bit more experimental um, in a less cautious way. What do you have to say about uh, the youth and uh, lack of caution with drugs? It depends which categories of drug one is uh, talking about. Even something like uh, cannabis has pitfalls, at least uh, a small minority of people experience derealization, depersonalization, psychotic episodes. On the other hand, for the great majority of people, of course, who use cannabis, it's uh, benign. Uh, uh, Still, of course, the most commonly abused drugs are uh, cigarettes and mm. uh, alcohol. Mm -hmm. uh, and once again, I'm going to be pretty orthodox uh, here and say, if at all possible, don't don't start smoking. And if you do drink, do so in moderation. Uh, nothing particularly intellectually exciting here. Mm -hmm. Okay, well... I think we'll come back to alcohol and cannabis later. Um, I, I guess alcohol is... The, yeah, yeah I'll, I'll talk about that later. But um, just for the for the viewers who may not know what a new topic is, what is what do new topics do, and what does the word mean? Uh, new topics. It's best to think of them as, as so-called smart drugs. However, one needs to be quite cautious about this label. A lot of the uh, agents that are sometimes called smart drugs or new topics in the media are really psychostimulants, and psychostimulants can boost one's cognitive performance on a, a, a number of uh, tests, but effectively what they're doing is improving the signal-to-noise ratio, and for certain uh, tasks this can be advantageous, uh, which is why that you can get away with doing uh, psychostimulants uh, for certain purposes, um, but 
at least in higher doses and taken for prolonged periods, they can also induce stereotypes of thought and behavior. So taking amphetamines, for instance, is not going to make you a good philosopher. Um, so yes, it's probably worth actually first exploring what one means by intelligence and what particular uh, kinds of cognitive performance one wants to enhance. Uh, now, if one is thinking of IQ tests, they're the kind of uh, test that you might get some marginal benefits from taking some of the standard nootropics, whether something like pyracetam, which is a cholinergic boost, or even a, uh, a gentle psychostimulant. But if, for instance, you want to improve social cognition, your capacity for empathetic un understanding, mind reading, then uh, these uh, drugs are unlikely to help. So, um, mind reading? Are there any drugs for that? Um, yes. Uh, in terms of, uh, of, of illegal drugs, uh, MDMA or ecstasy, uh, those, well, it, as is well known, it releases uh, a lot of serotonin and dopamine, uh, which account for its uh, pleasurable effects. Uh, uh, um, MDMA also releases uh, a lot of oxytocin, uh, uh, the trust hormone, the cuddle hormone, uh, and this induces a tremendous uh, uh, a sense of trust. It enhances mind reading and openness. Um, now, what do you mean by it, mind reading? Just so it's not ESP, is it? It's just I, like a. <laughs> I said this, this spontaneous tendency that most of us have to mentalize. Now, if I, for instance, do this, wave my hand, you could, in spite of the fact you've never seen me do that before, you could do actually a passable stab at interpreting why I did that, i.e., David wanted to make a particular point. I, you're putting your, yourself in my position and you ask, why, you know, why did David uh, decide to raise his hand like that? Um, People who lack this spontaneous mind reading capacity wouldn't be able to do that. I pick, people with uh, autism spectrum disorder would be completely baffled. I mean, why, why on earth did this, this fellow raise his hand? It's completely inexplicable. But yes, as I was saying, uh, uh, drugs, not merely uh, uh, scheduled drugs, but MDMA is one that do bo boost oxytocin function, will tend to uh, increase uh, empathetic understanding, uh, uh, trust, mind reading capacity. Um, but this is a very different conception of what many people, more orthodox people, uh, intend by intelligence amplification. Uh, a lot depends on how uh, rich and sophisticated our conception of intelligence is. Now, I suspect a lot of people who are quite high on the autism spectrum would think, well, this is a lot of touchy-feely nonsense, uh, uh, empathy, it's a personality variable, it's not, uh, it's, it's, it, it's not cognitively relevant. But on the contrary, I would argue, it is the development of superior mind reading uh, skills, enhanced social cognition, capacity for cooperative problem solving that help drive the evolution of distinctively human intelligence. And there's a risk that by focusing on amplifying one, one particular set of cognitive skills, what one might loosely call autistic intelligence, though it's very important, uh, will not help and in some cases will actually impair social cognition. Mm -hmm. So, yes, one needs to be uh, cautious with, with, with some of these drugs of possible side effects. Uh, there isn't yet a surefire drug that will amplify full-spectrum uh, intelligence. Yeah, that's interesting. So, um, autistic people are thought to have um, less of a grip on a theory of mind, a theory of other people's minds, um, than, than other people. I mean, there's been tests done where... Um, the where where it's required that an autistic person try and judge what people's intentions are, and they fail often, very often. Um, and so, is there any drugs out there that could help autistic people achieve um, a, a a more cohesive theory of mind, and be able, well, it, I guess, achieve the benefits of a theory of mind? A number of uh, uh, experiments, uh, tests have been done to see if 
uh, oxytocin or oxytocin releases will enhance social cognition in autistic people or people who are high on the autism spectrum. It's really it's dimensional rather than categorical. Um, results have been uh, equivocal. It's not simply a matter of having more more oxytocin. It would be much uh, easier if this were the case. Um, uh, and of course, some people with uh, Asperger's can be exceptionally high functioning, and it's not as though that they are uh, unaware that other people have minds, uh, nor is it the case that they are in some sense uh, uh, less moral, moral or, or, or psychopathic in some sense. On the contrary, many people, for instance, with Asperger's, because they are uh, systematizers and rule followers, for instance, they might uh, give 10% of their income or something to... to uh, uh, to charity, it's 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 a complicated uh, uh, issue, but yes, in just in terms of spontaneous uh, mentalization, this tendency to be interested in others' minds and feelings, uh, and the capacity for higher order intentionality, by which I, as an example, I uh, think that you believe that she wants that he desires yes. that. That's that that yeah. very complex. Classical. Well. Uh, that Shakespeare can sometimes use his sixth order intentionality. Most people uh, uh, can manage five. It's cognitively extremely demanding, but it's not tested for an existing IQ test, which is why, perhaps rather controversially, I would say IQ tests are measures of uh, autistic intelligence rather than full-spectrum general intelligence. Wow, that's interesting. So the ability to... Um, address sixth order uh, empathy. What, what what did you call it? Sixth order intentionality. Intentionality. intentionality is rather fancy philosopher's t uh, term, which isn't directly to do with uh, uh, in intentions in the in the popular sense. Um, yep. But uh, yes, it, it, as, as you can say, it, it, as one stacks up these, he wants that she believes that he hopes that they desire that. It becomes extremely cognitively demanding. Uh, and many non-human animals, for instance, uh, can't manage more than, let's say, second or third order uh, uh, intentionality. Right. Okay. Can you just, just as a quick divergence, can you, like, um, I guess, chimps and and some apes, maybe even like uh, bonobos, would be able to achieve some. Um, what what classes of animals can achieve much? Elephants, uh, but even uh, uh, Western uh, scrub jays, uh, with whom we last shared uh, uh, an ans a common ancestor hundreds of millions of years ago, and they don't even have a neocortex. Um, so yes, we shouldn't underestimate uh, the cognitive capacities, and certainly not the sentience of non-human animals. But if you want to look uh, what is distinctive about humans. Uh, it isn't uh, uh, simply our capacity uh, for logico-linguistic thought. It's all, also our capacity for cooperative problem solving, which even chimpanzees, in many cases, will find uh, uh, quite difficult. Wow. Um, um, anyway, this is just a, a rather long and roundabout way of, 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 of saying that, uh, yes, yeah, simply taking a, a drug that, uh, for instance, boosts your memory or performance on some repetitive or mathematical task isn't going to necessarily boost your all-round cognitive function. 